have the Ayatollah of Fantasy Rock and Roller with us today, Adam Rank. How are you doing, Rank? Um, it looked great in person, and I uh, just can't wait to next year where we can pack it full of 25000 How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. I didn't know it was Ball Guys Day. It was being ranked. I mean, how do you lose? This is the Dynasty Vipers Vipercast. Welcome back once again to the Dynasty Vipers Vipercast. This is episode 145, presented by the Fantasy Points Media Group. And 145 is just a number because I don't actually remember what episode we're on. We just basically <laughs> run out each and every week, throw a little something, something together for you. And this is where we are today. Joining me, as always, I got my hosts next to me all over the place. We got Major Caldwell at Way Too Major Media. And we have the redraft Viper herself at It's Tara Time. Tara Roberts, how you all doing tonight? <laughs> doing wonderful. I just, I just <laughs> noticed the name change. That is really funny. So you can't slide nothing past me. I'm all over this. I got this. I'm a visual person here. Right. Tara thinks she has jokes. She's not that funny. She got mom, is mom, got is mom jokes a thing or is it just dad jokes? I think you got mom jokes. Mom jokes, they're superior though. So yeah, I've got mom jokes and they are superior. Here we so go. So, Major, <laughs> when, mom, when mom drops a joke, would you call that the Mamba mentality? <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a nice, long, dramatic pause waiting for Major to be able to find the button. So, I'm going to have to go back and edit that back out. Now, when we go. get into today's show, we get going to news and notes. So we're going to touch on this just a little bit here, but we want to realize it is the start of the season. All these fake managers here are now focused on their teams. We are heading into week number one of the NFL season, which means week number one of the fantasy football season, which means we're going to open up the mailbag this week because we had all kinds of questions, all kinds of starts and sits. Hey, we are here to help you win. Starting off, though, i got to address this right off the get-go. A little bit of news and notes. Mitchell Trubisky is looks like he is going to be the starter. Why? Because he was named one of five Steelers captains earlier today. If you're going to get right. named a captain, there's a, probably a pretty good chance that you're going to be playing in those games when it matters the most. Quick thoughts here on Mitchell Trubisky Major, then over to Tara on your thoughts on this whole situation. Yeah, um, I think I think he should start, or maybe it's just one of these like courtesy uh, participation <laughs> captain awards, like you're – you bring the team together, you're the captain, but we're going to sit you down over here. You're like an assistant coach. Maybe. I don't know. But um, I think Mitch is uh, – he's okay. He'll be all right if he gets in there. What do you think, Tara? I mean, at this point, there's not a huge difference between Mitch Trubisky and Kenny Pickett to where you want to just go ahead and throw the rookie in for no apparent reason <laughs> right off the bat. So, you know, save him up. You know, give him some time to – get used to the NFL. Um, it's 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 always better if you don't have to throw those rookies in right away. So this makes sense. It's going to be Mitch Trubisky. I think we expected that. Right. I always enjoy seeing who's being the captain. I am the captain now for all these teams because there's so much turnover from year to year. Sometimes there's, a, I think it was the Carolina Panthers, which basically almost turned the entire captaincy roster over from one year to the next. Uh, outside of DJ Moore, obviously. But you look at this, there's so much change in a lot of these franchises here as we head into week number one. But, hey, week number one, it starts with Thursday night football. We have ourselves a Super Bowl preview. I'm calling it right now. I mean, these are two teams that very well could be in the Super Bowl when it's all said and done. Now, full disclosure, I have the Bills and the Eagles facing off in the Super Bowl. That's my Super Bowl matchup. But yeah. this, this has a lot of people's interest right now because – we are talking about the defending Super Bowl champions. Can they avoid that Super Bowl hangover? And two, we've got the Bills Mafia getting together. Can they inevitably get past their nemesis there in Kansas City, who the Chiefs have eliminated the Bills the last two seasons here in the playoffs? Matt, Major, what do you got here? What are we looking at for Thursday Night Football? What's got you excited for this one? I, I think you're psycho. The Eagles in the championship? That is, <laughs> huh? But no, I, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to I am excited to see that offense with the addition of A.J. Brown, see if Hertz kind of took that next step. Um, 
his trajectory kind of reminds me a little bit of of Dak Prescott's. So it'd be interesting to see where he is in that, um, you know, in that evolution. Um, yeah, but I, you, the Bills are going to be the Bills. So I, I'm excited to see them going. They look good in preseason, but, you know, I'm more excited to see what the Eagles look like with, with A.J. Brown in there. And Tara, what are you excited about here Thursday Night Football as we kick off week number one? Um, you know, for Thursday Night Football, I'm kind of – I'm just, I'm excited that we get a really good game. I know that seems kind of boring, but I'm really excited to get a good game. Um, I'm excited to see just how much Gabe Davis is actually involved. I know it's probably like been one of the most hot debated topics over the off season between fantasy analysts. Um, and I want to see exactly how much target share he's going to get so that we can gauge like, what's this going to look like um, with him in this offense? So I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Oh, and Isaiah, Isaiah Mc, oh, I guess maybe I'm more excited. Isaiah McKenzie as well and see how he can do in that slot role. So how many how many uh, catches you see for, for Gabe? Under, over, five? Over. Over, yeah. Yeah. Over. If he go, got five, little, I'd be happy. It'd be good. little prop betting there for you right now. Over five receptions, that's the call from the redraft Viper herself. Hey, listen, <laughs> I, I'm looking, I'm going to defend this Eagles here real quick here before we get into the actual Thursday night football matchup here. The Eagles have two things going for them. They're going to be able to play defense there. That front four is as good as any front four in the league. Their back end is finally matching that front there. Now with the James Bradbury coming over there, Darius Slay and Chauncey Gardner-Johnson. I mean, this back end looks pretty good. And we know that the Eagles can run the ball. It's something they can do with it's Miles Sanders, Kenneth Gainwell, Jalen Hurts. You know the Eagles are going to be able to run the ball this season even though they're trying to transition to a more passer-friendly type offense. But that's neither here nor there because right now, we're going to talk about one of the big matchups here on Thursday Night Football, especially for those who are in it for fantasy football, and that is Cooper Cup versus Stephon Diggs, two top five fantasy wide receivers heading out week number one to face off against one another. Hey, we got offensive weapons all over the place. Josh Allen, Matthew Stafford. We talk about Cup and Diggs. We've got ourselves... Cam Akers and Devin Sing. Okay, maybe not the running back position, but you got <laughs> Allen Robinson in there, Gabriel Davis, yeah, Isaiah McKenzie, it. Dawson Knox. So much firepower between these two offenses, and their defenses are no slouch either. You've got guys like Aaron Donald, Vaughn Miller, Jalen Ramsey on the back end. Why am I mentioning Ramsey here? Because he's going to play into my argument here as we head into 1v1. And this week, after... Tara took out Major a couple weeks ago. I took out Major again last week. Thank you to the votes coming through on a 24-hour poll. Basically, if you missed it last week, Major talked about how Cam Akers was a top 15 running back this season for fantasy. Twitter disagrees with you. So now we are going to go into this one right now. Let's pull up the screen here. Let's get this going on here. Let's get our little... Uh, fantasy points, media group. I'm like, gonna be like Tara, like you know, she does her videos when she points that stuff. I'm pointing at who's winning. Just point the right way. I don't do it well. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. Honestly, when you're looking at Cooper Cup and Stefan Diggs, I don't think you could really be wrong with either one of these guys. Look, I love myself some Stefan Diggs. I really do. He's my wide receiver five heading into this season. But looking at this contest and the matchups inside the matchups. Diggs, as good as he is, simply has not found success against Jalen Ramsey. The two have faced against each other twice now, and Ramsey has gotten the better of Diggs both occasions. Right? Okay, I know Tara, she likes herself some stats and stuff. Major, you know this as well as anybody. But if I'm going to pull up some stats, I'm going to look at what Stefan Diggs has done head-to-head against Jalen Ramsey, and it's not good. Two receptions on four targets for nine yards. How does that sound? It sounds horrible. It's not going to get the job done, unfortunately. On the other end of this tale of the tape, you have the reigning triple crown winner in Cooper Cup. I could probably stop this argument right here before diving into the matchup, but let's look. First, understand that Cup is as close to matchup proof as anyone in recent memory. In 21 games last season, Cup was held to under 90 yards just one time. And that was a five-catch, 64-yard performance against the Cardinals. After that, it was 90-plus receiving yards in each and every game. All the way through the playoffs. That's like 20 games in which he had over 90 yards. Now, as for his individual matchup, normally Tredavious White would be a worthy matchup for anyone on the outside. However, he's on the pup, and that is left to Teron Johnson, who, you know, he's pretty good in the slot. He can get the job done. He's a good slot guy, but he's just not on the same level 
as Cooper Cup. And for that, I'm out on this whole thing. That's why one of the major reasons those matchups inside the matchups, why I'm in on Cooper Cup. Now, you could make an argument here that Matthew Stafford, that elbow, and everything that we're hearing here and there about that elbow, but hey, Stafford is as tough as they come at the quarterback position, and he's had enough time to kind of heal. It's week one, right? This is as healthy as Matthew Stafford is going to be week one. He's not going to get any healthier as the season goes on. So for that reason, Cooper Cup is going to be more productive for fantasy purposes than Stefan Diggs this week. Hmm. So it's an interesting argument. Um, and I'm not going to say I don't necessarily believe it because, I mean, you'd be kind of crazy to say that Cup will be outperformed by literally anybody. But since you chose this topic, Matt, I will argue for Stefan Diggs with true passion. Like I actually believe this because I kind of can justify it. I want um, everyone to understand this right now for everyone watching this. Tara chose Stefan Diggs here. She is a believer in Stefan Diggs. What she's about to tell you, <laughs> she actually kind of believes or else she, she's put, a, to she put a buffer. Stuff. She put a buffer though. Just go and do what you do. You don't have to put a buffer on it. I chose yeah, Stefan yeah. Diggs because I like a challenge. <laughs> so, so what you're saying is right now Stefan Diggs is going to be challenged to be Cooper Cup. <laughs> this sounds like you're going to do some you editing right I'm here on. to kind of splice splice in my words. You get um, it. <laughs> so uh people watch the YouTube video. I don't think he can edit that. I'm not really sure. But <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> first of all, now that I've got those stats from you, Matt, I do love the stats. I do. Yeah, Jalen Ramsey. Um the defenses, they don't look exactly how they do prior. So when I'm looking at last year and I'm looking at the defenses from last year and not from 2020 and using older stats, um, last year, yeah, the Rams were actually kind of vulnerable against the pass. I know these are both fantastic defenses, but if I'm going to choose one defense that was better against the pass than the other, it was actually the Bills who gave up the least amount of fantasy points to opposing wide receivers. And it was the Rams that actually gave up the 11th most. Um, and they were um, particularly struggling. Um, and the, uh, the Rams, oh God, guys, I actually kind of I got really thrown off on this. Um, the Rams actually really struggled last year and when we look at cooper cup and where he plays in comparison to the buffalo bills bills were actually pretty good against slot receivers which is where cooper cup plays so arguably it might come down to literally whether or not the defense plays better against stefan diggs and cooper cup and their talent they're both extremely talented but when we look at which defense is going to be able to step up probably going to be the Bills a little bit more. And when I think about Stefan Diggs and I think about overall, I think this is just the kickoff of the start of a new season for Stefan Diggs. Last year was kind of disappointing for Stefan Diggs. Um, it was good. It was still good. He was the wide receiver or wide receiver seven overall. And that's really nothing to sniff at, but um, that was kind of disappointing when you were coming off of such an incredible season in that 2020 season where he was the third overall receiver. So fantasy managers were expecting a little bit more. They got a little bit less. And I think we're actually going to get a lot better performance from him last year, because when you look at what he did last year, the targets were there, the touchdowns were there, the efficiency was not there. So all we need to do is just improve on that efficiency. And I think that is going to flip back this year. And so I think this game just kicks off the resurgence of Stefan Diggs, and maybe we get a little bit of that Super Bowl hangover combined with the Bills defense being extremely good against the pass and particularly good against an area where Cooper Cup excels in. Cooper Cup will still probably be amazing, but if there's a game for Cooper Cup to underperform and for Stefan Diggs to outperform him, probably going to be this game right here. So that is my argument for Stefan Diggs. I, I'm not sure what your argument you made. You made like three different arguments there. You defended, <laughs> you defended Cooper Cup. You defended Jared Goff somehow along the way. I mean, this for me, this is like, like yeah. man, this was like Rocky where he turns around at Mick. He goes, just cut me, Mick. Cut me. It's over. Just cut me. I don't, I don't know, Terry. man. I think she may have Jedi mind tricked you. She did like a hundred um, different arguments. We don't know which one to pull from. They all sounded good. I'm kind of leaning her way on this one. 
Yeah, we know what happens when Major goes with you. You know you're on the wrong side of the All argument. Right, here we that's go. basically, here historically we speaking, go. that's what it means. We so we will put this you out just, there. You just got to forget the fact that I started off confused about which quarterback I was talking about. You just got to just kind of let that one go. It okay? happens. You know, her team, her her college team is playing right now. Her her mind is not all the way in this. We get it. She, you're halfway here today, and this, we we totally yeah. understand why. Yes. Well, all I'm going to say out there is when, when your opponent starts defending your point of view, I mean, that that's a win right there by default. <laughs> but, hey, you know what? I was excited for this argument, and I was, I'm excited about the impending victory that comes along with it. But, Major, let's move on to the rest of Week 1's number slate, uh, slate here. What are you most excited for when it comes to fantasy or just the NFL in general? Oh, I really just love football. I love like the excitement of the kickoff. I love everything about football. It brings me back to when I actually played. Um, it, it's just the College a good, of the Canyons. If anyone wants to go back and a, check the footage, yeah, College of the Canyons and 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 uh, Eastern Oregon University. Check me out. But we, it's, it's it's just a good thing, you know. I know football. They get a lot of slack for how they handle things off the off the field and everything, but. I'm a big player first person, and I love each and every one of the players. I don't think anyone sucks. I think everyone is good. I think everyone should get paid the most. So I'm just happy to see what, you know, to see the the drama of the game, you know, so much drama, like who's going to win, who's going to lose, who's going to perform well, what rookie's going to perform well, what rookie's going to suck. I love every aspect of, of, like, not fantasy football, but just the NFL in general. Well, Major Caldwell, number nine of the program, number four in the bloodline, and number one in our hearts here today. Now, Sarah, what are you, what are you excited for here in week number one? Jared Goff. Uh, no. Um, <laughs> I- <laughs> like, he's really not here. <laughs> But golf no. is good, though. I'm gonna give golf some love. Go ahead. Yeah, let me not rain on my par- on his parade. But um, um, Jalen hurts, but you guys already talked about that one. So the other thing that I'm excited about um, is the Packers versus the Vikings because this is. I mean, there's so much going on in this game. We've got a brand new offense for the Vikings. We've got a brand new coach, brand new system. We get to see how much this is going to affect Justin Jefferson. We've got Irv Smith, uh, Jalen Rager. Is he actually going to be involved in the offense? Then you go over to the Packers end, and we don't know what's going to happen there with that wide receiver core. Who's going to step up? Maybe I'll talk about that later. But um, I'm I'm excited to see how they utilize those two running backs. There's just – there's so much that we don't know and so many positive outcomes. I'm really super excited to see what actually happens. That, that game has so many storylines attached to it. Life without Devontae, that comes to mind. Rogers psychedelic advantages. Kirk Cousins in this new Kevin O'Connell offense. I mean, those are all kind of things that intrigue me. And, hey, you know what? If Jalen Rager goes off this week across from uh, Justin so. Jefferson, I mean, Twitter's going to explode, isn't it? It's, it's going to absolutely go bonkers here. But for me, I want to keep it real. For me, the storyline I'm watching most, I could have easily taken the easy way out here. That Raiders versus Chargers, I mean, that was one of the best games of the year last season to get into the playoffs. I mean, there's lots riding on that. But for me, I want to talk about the ushering in of a new era. Trey Lance versus Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. These are two young, outstanding, talented signal callers. Both can do it with their legs. Both can do it with their arms. Unfortunately, so far, we have not seen either one of them do it as a professional. Justin Fields had his struggles, chalk that up to rookie season. Trey Lance, he's going to have his struggles this season too, but the talent is undeniable with what he's got. He's only thrown like 450 passes since high school. So breathe. It's going to be okay for Trey Lance. It's just going to be a little bit rocky from time to time. But this is the new era. Lamar Jackson, Jalen Hurts, these Kyler Murray, that Konomi Code type quarterback, Josh Allen. This is the new wave of the NFL. There's going to be pocket passers that are going to be able to play the game for years and years and years. But for fantasy, these are our guys. And I'm excited to see this first head-to-head matchup, really, between these two. I mean, what more can you ask? Two young quarterbacks with all kinds of talent going at it. I mean, I'm excited about that one. And it's a Bears and 49ers game. So anytime you're getting excited about a Bears game, you know there's something special that's going to be happening there. Plus, you know, I am a... Cole Komet and Darnell Mooney truther. So I kind of have to lean that way. True. Oh, now, one more thing that I want to that I can't wait to see is 
Twitter going crazy. I want to see all these analysts, everyone who's <laughs> predicting like all this stuff all year, who's going to be the number one guy. And we're going to see who's really good at this analyst game. Oh, receipt season is going to be fantastic. <laughs> oh, my hey, year. trademark receipt season. We're gonna we're gonna have some cam acres. I mean, hey, last season my Jacoby Myers prediction did not come true. I'm not gonna I'm not I'm gonna stand there. I'm gonna go right there. I'm like I'm not gonna back down from something that I said that I believed in. Right? It's right. receipt season. It's all gonna check out at the end. Now, quick rapid fire, quick answers here. Tara, Justin Fields or Trey Lance this week? Trey Lance. Major, which rookies are poised for an immediate impact in week number one? I'm going to go with Pierce, but I'm going to go with Alec Pierce. Nice. A little side shuffle there. I, I dig that. A little crab walk on that one. Yeah. Uh, okay, Tara, would you go Gabriel Davis, Christian Kirk, Travis Etienne, or Antonio Gibson for your final flex spot in PPR? That's Gabriel Davis, Christian Kirk, Travis Etienne, and Antonio Gibson. Um, you know, for me, it's down to Gabriel Davis and Christian Kirk. Uh, if you want the stable one, probably go with Christian Kirk, but I think the upside is there for Davis. So I probably lean a little bit towards Gabriel Davis. Hmm. See, I had this question came through my mailbox. I went with Christian Kirk based on the preseason eight targets out of 21 attempts from Trevor Lawrence. Gabriel, da it's not that I have anything against Gabriel Davis. It's the fact that I hate Thursday night football matchups to start off my season if you lay a goose egg, you're in trouble the rest of the week. If you hit big, hey, congratulations. But right. there's something about me that always kind of backs away from Thursday night football if I can avoid it. We always know Thursday night football typically has some of the lower scoring games, except last season, Dallas and Tampa Bay, hey, they went ham last <laughs> year. Now, Major, back to you. Rank the following this season for PPR. DeAndre Swift, Derrick Henry, Saquon Barkley, and Alvin Kamara. Mm. Wait, who's the first two again? Derek Swift, Swift, Henry, Barkley, Camara. I think I'm gonna kind of do it in that order. I kind of like the order you already put it in. All right, Tara. I see the little eyebrow there. We're, we're, this is part of the fun part of the show is the facial recognition. Do you agree <laughs> with that order? <laughs> uh nope. I would go Henry, Camara, Swift, Barkley. But Camara right. is he playing? Oh, okay. So, yeah, I'll move him up. Unless then. something goes sideways. I mean, something uh, could thought, go sideways. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, yeah, I'll move him up if he's playing. I thought he was actually suspended or something. I, I missed that one. Yeah, and I think I've got it basically as my PPR rankings. I believe I have Swift at six, Henry at seven, Barkley at nine, and Kamara at 11, I think is how I have them ranked. But very bullish now, on Swift. Yeah, I, I like, I think, I like I him a lot. He's hit the thousand, a thousand. If yeah. anyone can do it, he's going to be flirting with it this season. I like exactly. that, especially in TPR. Now, Tara, we know we kind of leaned Christian Kirk and Gabriel Davis in the last one over the running backs. Do you still believe that to be true with Christian Kirk versus Damian Pierce? Yeah, for sure. Um, I, well, I, you know, if you've drafted Damian Pierce to be in your starting lineup, for sure, go ahead and do that. But if you don't have to, avoid that just because we want to see how much he actually gets third down work. So give it a week, see how it is, and then pivot to it. I would go with Christian Kirk. All right, Major. Two of my love interests here, Darnell Mooney or Elijah Moore. Oh, I can't even do that to you. I'm uh, oh man, that's like the little uh, Spider Man meme when they're pointing at each other. They're like the same dude. I'm gonna go with Mooney just because. Actually, you know what? They're playing against the Niners. I'm gonna go with uh, with Eli. All right, Tara, back to you here. Gabriel Davis, Allen Robinson, Thursday Night Football. Who you got? Allen Robinson. And then for both of you here, AJ Dillon, Brandon Ayuk, or Cole Komet in the flex spot PPR. I'm Tara. big. Oh, go ahead, Tara. AJ Dillon. Major? We knew she would say that. And I'm going to be a homer as well. <laughs> I, I'm really high on, on Ayuk this year. I think he has a special connection with, with Trey Lance that uh, he didn't have with uh, Jimmy G. And I'm going to go with Cole Komet just to make it difficult for anyone who's paying attention to the show. And pretty much comes up the Dynasty Viper. No well, now. Except Welcome to the I, Dynasty Vipers. I, I do believe that Mooney and Komet are going to be absolutely peppered. Even against San Francisco, someone's going to catch passes. I think San Francisco is going to get out early in this game. So I think there's going to be a lot of targets spread around. And there's only two guys to give targets to in Chicago. Now, <laughs> let's get into this. QB starts, QB sits. T uh, Major, hit me with a start. Hit me with a sit at the quarterback position. Go. I'm going my start. I'm going with Tua. I, I, I'm, I'm a bandwagoner. I'm totally all in on it. It's going to be a lot of 
quick slants for touchdowns. Going to be a lot of bonus points if your fantasy leagues have that in in the point system. Um, and Miami plays against New England well. Like in the last since 2018, they're five and three against New England. Um, and it's not your your father's Patriots anymore. I think that defense is getting a little long in the tooth, and the offense is really young, so it's, it's a little off balance there for me. And with the new additions. Oh, Miami is like a track meet. You know, you have all the fastest people in the NFL on one team. And I think the quarterback is is going to be too easy for him to take advantage of that. All he has to do is not turn the ball over. For my sits, I'm going to go with Justin Fields. The 49ers, to me, have the best defense in the league. Yeah, maybe I'm a homer. Um, but Justin Fields last year was running for his life. Um, I think he will, like um, Matt just said, there's going to be some opportunities there because I think it will kind of be a blowout. Will be some garbage time. You get those points there, but I think Justin Fields will give you some uh, some yardage on the ground, but he's not going to give you that uh, those touchdowns you need to be relevant in your fantasy leagues. Well, hopefully Matt Everflus is a little bit smarter than Matt Nagy there and designs sure. a few runs for his quarterback because when Justin Fields had at least eight kind of rushing attempts per contest. He found himself in that top 12 conversation for fantasy. And Bill mm -hmm. Belichick, he don't care about two and on. Now, Major, I mean, sorry about that. Tara, over to you here. Who's your starts? Who's your sits? Let's start with your sits first because it kind of coincides with one of Major's starts. Yeah, and I'd like to dispute. Guys, and just full disclosure, I'm so distracted right now <laughs> with Clemson and their woefully embarrassing 17 to 10 lead over Georgia Tech. Um, so I'm not a happy tiger right now. But um, <laughs> but yeah, my my sit is actually to us. Sorry, Major. Um, yeah, while I so I this is not a knock on Tua. I do believe that Tua will improve this year. I like Tua as somebody who can work his way into a starting option, definitely as a streaming option for sure. But um, let's give it until after this week um, before we start the start to it um, conversation, because I know I know things are a little bit different in New England. They've lost a few players. Um, Kyle Vinoy, who was a big impact last year, but it's still a very solid defense. And if they're solid against something, they're very solid against the pass. So this should be a very hard fought battle. This will be a good battle between these two teams. Um, yeah, I do think Miami will probably beat them, but they're solid defenses. Miami's defense is great too. So I don't know that it's going to be a massive game from Tua. So he's more on the sit side for me. Um, my start side is uh, Derek Carr versus the Chargers. Uh, this game you know, it, it's going to be a very high scoring, high point total game. It is literally, I think, the second highest um, in the entire slate um, as far as the over under. And when we look at the Chargers, they have made very big uh, improvements on their defense, very good additions. But a lot of those additions were against were for um, helping out that run defense um, that was genuinely awful last year. Uh, so I think that they're not super, super stacked in a way that Derek Carr won't be able to succeed with Devontae Adams, uh, Darren Waller, Hunter Renfro, all healthy. This is literally the perfect time for you to start Derek Carr. Um, great situation. So that is my start. I love myself some Derek Carr this season, but I, I got to see how that's offensive line, especially on the right side, holds up to right. Joey Bosa and Khalil Mack. That's going to be the key. That's going to be that matchup inside the matchup for the Raiders and the Chargers. If that right side can hold up. I mean, they basically cut Alex Leather there and, it's not a good situation there. So we'll see. But Carr, hey, you don't need much time to get the ball to Devontae Adams and Hunter Renfro. I mean, I think you're going to see a lot of quick hitters and stuff like that, especially to kind of get that pressure off of them. Now, for me, it's Lamar Jackson versus the New York Giants. I mean, or New York Jets, sorry. I think he's playing the Baltimore's playing the Jets there to start with. Now, don't overthink things. Start your studs. You drafted these guys early for a reason. I still believe you start your studs, especially off the start of the season. That's something for me that I'm always going to believe into. Now, Jackson, he just saw another a quarterback there, and Russell Wilson, he got paid. So you know Jackson's going to sit there, and he's going to be laying back there and earning himself some bank this season. Look for him to run the ball left, right, and center. Major likes to get people paid. Lamar Jackson, he loves to get himself paid. Now, for me, the sit here is going to be Matthew Stafford here. I know I talked earlier about Tredavious White being out of this bill secondary, and that's all good and fun and daddy there. But Vaughn Miller, much like I was a little bit worried about Derek Carr there with Khalil Mack and uh, Joey Bosa, Vaughn Miller, 
he's going to be looking to get after Matt Stafford. So it's going to be interesting to see if the Bills can get to Stafford without blitzing because if they blitz, we know Stafford is one of the best quarterbacks in the National Football League against the blitz. He can pick blitzes apart. Now, if they can get to him with coverage on the back end, that's going to make things very difficult for Stafford, which teams did towards the back end of last season before he got hot again during the playoffs. So for me, I'm taking a bit of a wait-and-see approach with Matthew Stafford in week number one, thinking I hopefully have better options here because of where Stafford is currently going off as both QB in that QB 12 to 14 range. So I'm hoping I have a better option already on my bench that I can plug in there. Now, moving away to the running back position here, Major, Starting back with you here. Give us a start. Give us a sit at the running back position. I got to go. Welcome back to Derek Henry. You get the Giants on your first game back off an of injury. I think he's going to eat and eat often. He will be the leading rusher after week one. Uh, that Giants defense is awful. I mean, they're young. They're improving and everything. But Derek Henry is just a man. And uh, he's just a man. Like, he, that's all it is. Um, my sit, I'm going to go with. Damian Pierce, like I like him. I do think he's okay. Indiana's defense is a little underrated. I kind of like them. Their defense is really good. They're fast. They're, they move around. Um, that off that Houston offense doesn't have that many like options. I know we like a couple players out here that Matt's keep talking about, but you gotta that run game that he's gonna be running against a stack box the whole the whole season, pretty much. So uh hats off to the young man but it's hard for me to like start a rookie you know game one yeah i kind of agree there a little bit of gaming pierce i mean the hype is getting a little out of control i mean i out like pierce control. as much as anybody <laughs> but negative game script has to factor in here at some point i think i think most of us would agree that indianapolis is probably going to take it to the houston Texans. but hey we would have thought that the jacksonville jaguars wouldn't have beat the colts at the end of the season last season so hey who knows what's going to happen but uh, hey, hey i love davis Sunday. mills nico Collins, brandon cooks I think the Texans are going to be forced to pass a little bit more than they're going to be able to run. Now, Tara, over to you here for your starts and sits at the running back position. And I know you got one of my guys on this list. <laughs> uh, my start is Javante Williams. Um, I'm just you know, just letting people know, don't be scared. Um, we've heard about 10,000 things this season to, from a lot of very trusted um, resources out of uh, the Broncos beat reporters Um in terms of it leaning, you know, as high as 70-30 and as low as 50-50 and maybe even lower in some people's crazy minds, but it's been all over the place. Um, but I lean towards trusting Javante, despite the fact that Melvin Gordon will still be involved. I'm not saying that he's going to go away. He'll still be involved. But this is a great time to test that theory and not really worry about it because the Broncos are playing Seattle, a team who is in disarray. Um, and unfortunately, they just... They cannot compete with Denver. I don't see any way, shape, or form that that's going to happen. Um, my guess would be that Russ is going to cook very early. This game is going to get carried away, and then it's going to be carried on the ground, and Javante will get his, and don't be afraid. Don't sit there and worry about the split in the presence of Melvin Gordon. Start your suds, and Javante is one of those. Um, my sit is for literally any running back on Atlanta. We like don't don't get cute <laughs> thinking that you're going to like like oh let me go with Cordero Patterson. Like we don't we don't know genuinely what is happening in they Atlanta don't know. right now. They don't know. Yeah, I don't think they know either. It's kind of just like a hey, um, because I don't know if they really intend to compete aggressively this year. But aside from that, it's just a big no go, <laughs> especially because they play. The Saints, which is not a team that you want to run against under any circumstances. Um, and unfortunately, none of these guys in the Atlanta running back room, you don't have any confidence in them. We look at Cordero Patterson. We, we had a lot of confidence in him for a large chunk of the season last year, but his effectiveness doesn't come on the ground. It comes through the pass game. We've got the addition of Drake London. Um, we don't really know exactly how much of that pass game that they're going to uh, need and have Cordero Patterson involved. So this is way too much of a gamble to be playing any of these guys right now. Just don't do it. Let's just just avoid it for right now until somebody pops. The best running back on that Falcons roster is the should have been the MVP of a Super Bowl, and Damian Williams. However, that's how that's where we're at with the state of Atlanta there. And for Seattle, I hope they get creamed. Anyone who busts up those nasty ass lime green jerseys decide deserve to get what's coming to them. I mean, those, those have nice, got to be the worst jerseys in the National <laughs> Football no League. 
You know what? I'm going to show up in a lime green Ouch, jumpsuit, man. and then you tell me how good I look, okay? It probably won't look good on you, but on these guys that actually work out and stuff, <laughs> it might work for them. I don't know. Well, who's going to work out this week at the running back position? Elijah Mitchell. Hey, I will not back down. This is one of my guys. And look, this Bears defense is not very good. I'll be interested to see how Trey Lance deals with Robert Quinn. I mean, that's one of those matchups inside the matchups. And the best way to slow down that pass rush is quick hitters, quick screens, and draw plays. And Elijah Mitchell, we know what he can do when he gets the rock in his hand. So I love myself, Mitchell, to pound the rock early and often against the Chicago Bears this week. And at running back, I am sitting Cam Akers on Thursday night football. This, again, is about this Bills defense. Tara touched on it a little bit earlier against the pass. Well, they were just as stingy against the run last season. Akers has two 100-yard games to, in his career. And in both those games, he had to have 30-plus touches to reach the century mark as far as rushing is concerned. I don't see any way, any game script that's going to allow him to get 30 touches against the Bills in week number one. So for me, he is a sit, especially because he's not a top 15 running back this season. Now heading over to the wide receiver position, I know we try to keep these to about two or three lines. Obviously, we're bad at instructions, all three of us. But Major, <laughs> give us a start and a sit at the wide receiver position. Yeah, with the starts, I'm going to go out on a limb and give you guys a sleeper. I'm going to go with Miko Hartman. Uh, someone has to catch the ball from one of the greatest quarterbacks who ever graced the face of the earth. And he is the most familiar one. He's the fastest one. He's taking over Tyreek's routes. I'm, you can get some points there. I think there's some points there to be had. Uh, for my sits, I'm going to go with Devontae Adams. The Chargers have done a lot of work on that defense, and they have one of the best defenses in the league. And they have one of the best secondaries in the league with Samuel and uh, J.C. Jackson. Um, so I, it's going to be a lot of double teams on him. I think all the other Raiders are going to eat a little bit more. But, um, yeah, I think it might be a bumpy ride for Adams. Well, Nicole Hardman, I mean, we got to stop trying to make him a thing. Every year we try to make him a thing. It hasn't been that thing. And but I'm, if there's one person that can air that ball up and a wide receiver that can go out there and catch up to it from Patrick Mahomes, it's going to be Nicole Hardman. Yes, I got the head nod. That means – Major knew exactly where I was going with the Ketchup Mahomes reference. But other than that, I mean, we got to stop. I, I don't see that happening here as far as Nicole Hardman being a thing. But, hey, Sammy Watkins is always a thing during week one. And whoever predicts that outside of Sammy Watkins. Now, Kara, over to you for your starts and sits for, your starts and sits for week number one. one. You got one. Glad I was paying attention there. <laughs> My start of the week is Sammy Watkins. What team does he play for? <laughs> for the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> week one, Sammy is the best. <laughs> oh, take any negative sound effects from Major because we all know Sammy Watkins, week one. That is the week to play Sammy. That's literally, that's it. That's it. The week one. And we've got the perfect combination of week one, Sammy, because we've got this situation, unfortunately, with the Packers, where we've got Alan Lazard, who his status is still completely up in the air. We have no idea. Uh, we don't even know his injury. It's like it's an undisclosed <laughs> injury, and that's a little scary. That's a little scary. Heads up, Alan Lazard owners play. Right. Pay close attention here. Um, so, you know, if he can't play, that's a big hit to that Packers offense because that's the guy that early on Aaron Rodgers is going to lean on before he gets comfortable with these rookies. Christian Watson, we did get the news that he'll be ready to play, but unfortunately, he didn't get to play enough in the preseason to really justify the thought that Rodgers is going to lean on him. So I don't think he's going to see a lot of work. We've got Romeo Dobbs as well, who's got, you know, he's gotten, he's looked fantastic, gotten some work, but it's still a little bit of a question mark. So I think that Aaron Rodgers is going to lean on his most veteran presence, as he always does, and that's Sammy Watkins, and he's kind of vocalized it as well. So I think we need to lean into that. If you've got Sammy and you want to gamble, this is the week. Week one, Sammy Watkins is your start. Um, my sit on the opposite end is Amari Cooper. And Mar Amari Cooper is going to be my sit um, over and over and over again every <laughs> time we do this show every single week because I will not be starting Amari Cooper while <laughs> Jacoby Brissett is playing, which is unfortunately a large chunk of this. Well, I won't say unfortunately, um, which is a large chunk of the season. Uh, so on top of that, that Carolina defense is underrated. They're getting a lot of players back last year. They were hurt. They were very hurt last year um, defensively. They're getting a lot of those players back. It's going to be a good turnaround from them. And I just don't want to play Amari Cooper. Um, yeah, sit him. 
Sorry, guys. Yeah, you know what? I think you nailed both those here. If there is a week to start Sammy Watkins, it's going to be week number one. I mean, Randall Cobb's not the answer there. We don't know what's going on with Lazard. The rookies are the rookies still. Robert Tunyon and Aaron Jones are probably going to be ones leading this team in receptions by the end of the day. Now, for me, I could have taken the easy way out here. I could have gone with Michael Pittman because I think Michael Pittman could be a top five wide receiver this week. I mean, it's the Houston Texans. It's Matt Ryan. Matt Ryan loves to pepper those wide receiver ones. So that, that's the easy way. But I want to take an – when you look at starts and sits and people ask a question, the answer should always be Christian Kirk. I mean, that is my go-to answer all week too when people say, who should I start, this person or this person? Well, where's Christian Kirk? He should be starting no matter what. He's a must-start this week. Kirk saw eight of Trevor Lawrence's 21 attempts in week number two of the preseason. Chase Young, he's out for the Washington team. The que- the secondary in D.C. is questionable at best, so you have to feel good about Christian Kirk in week number one. And my sit is Keenan Allen versus the Raiders. In two games last season against the Raiders, Allen had 13 receptions. That's not terrible, but he turned those 13 receptions into just 88 yards. I can't get behind. Even Mike Williams struggled in that first game. He got right in that second game with 113 yards receiving. But Keenan Allen, it seemed to be that the Raiders were keying in on him in the entire game. Now they got Rocky Sin, Nate Hobbs. He stepped up on the other side. This Raiders secondary, this Raiders defense as a whole is pretty good. Plus, you got Chandler Jones opposite of Max Crosby. There's going to be pressure coming after Justin Herbert. As good as Justin Herbert is. Pressure changes a man, no matter how you want to look at it. And the same can be said on Derek Carr on the other side of things. Now, finally, the tight end position here. Major, give me a tight end start. Give me a tight end sit. Let's get on out of here. Man, no fan should be open the whole game. Denver Broncos owe that to him. They send him to football <laughs> purgatory. They owe him a big game. Like, they should not cover him at all. That's they, that's the least they can do for sending him to like the worst team in the league right now. Um, and for my sits, I'm going to go with Dalton Knox. You guys took all the people I kind of wanted. I wanted uh, Mike Jacecki, and I wanted I'm, I'm like messing up y'all's. No, I it's just I don't know. I think the Rams are the Rams are going to play hard. It's going to be one of those games, and I think he's going to get um, kind of lost in excitement of all these big name players. Bold prediction, Will Disley will outscore Noah Fant this week. That's a bold prediction right there for the Seahawks. Sad now, Ter- <laughs> If it comes true, I'm totally running this down next week. Oh, now, yeah. Tara, who do you got in your tight end position for starts and sits? Um, you know, you, you seemed a little down on those uh, pass catchers there for the Chargers, but I am up on Gerald Everett. Um, tight, ends are tight, of, tight ends are a different story when it comes against the Raiders. That's historically yeah. true. <laughs> yes. He, and he'll be, uh, even again, not against the Raiders. Um, Gerald Everett will be one of my favorite streaming options this season, but specifically, as Matt mentioned, um, the Raiders were straight up one of the worst teams last year against tight ends. Um, defense as a whole is, you know, all cool, as Matt said, but I haven't seen anything in their offseason moves that will drastically change the fact that they just seem to struggle really and give up a lot of points to tight ends specifically. So stream Gerald Everett. I think this is a really good week for it. But then my sit, uh, Major mentioned, it's uh, Mike Kosicki, unfortunately, and he's going to also be on my list a lot this season for most right. of the season. Like, um, I have no confidence in him. First of all, there's way too many weapons there and too few of options for him to be able to make a significant impact. You will never feel comfortable starting this man. I would start literally almost anybody else in that offense um, before I would start him. Uh, so, yeah, and then on top of that, uh, we go back to, you know, stats. Obviously, you know, I love my stats, as Matt and Major love to mention. But uh, New England was one of the best teams against tight ends last season. So this is a whole big, giant, avoid, red flag, don't do it. There's so many other options that you can go with. And one of those options should be, and always should be, at least for the first six weeks, Zach Ertz. He gets the Kansas City Chiefs this week. I don't care what the Chiefs did against tight ends last season it doesn't really matter I'm not even gonna bother looking it up because all I need to know is what Zach Ertz did without DeAndre Hopkins in the lineup and Ertz was a top six weekly tight end as long as Hopkins missed time now you've got Mark Marquise Hollywood Brown there from the College of the Canyons he is going to stretch this defense out which means that underbelly of that Chiefs defense is going to be left exposed for Zach Ertz to pick up some yards pick up some touchdowns I think it's gonna be a big week 
for Ertz in week number one. And then because I hate Thursday night football players in my lineup, and I typically, I just, you know what? I just downright hate Tyler Higby in general. I would put him in my sit category here. The Bills, it's not just because I hate Tyler Higby. This matchup is horrible for tight ends as well. The Bills have allowed just 8.44 fantasy points per game to tight ends last season. That was the fourth best mark. With questions surrounding Stafford and that arm, I'm completely out. Higby's value comes from catching touchdowns, and Buffalo only allowed three touchdowns to tight ends last season. And Matt Milano, he's pretty good in coverage, especially when it comes to covering those tight ends. Advantage Bills here once again. And Tyler Higby, he's just a jerk. So he's not going to be in my start call oh, ever. Why is he a jerk? <laughs> he's just a jerk in general. Look mm. it up. You can go Google it. Yeah. Google, okay. Google Tyler Higby is a jerk, and you'll find out why he's a jerk. Oh, i got to look it now, up now. I have other words I could have used, but I'm deciding to use PG because I know my kids watch the show from time to time. Do With they? that all being said, I just wanted to run this one last stat out there because I thought it was fantastic when I saw it come across my Twitter feed. In 2021, NFL teams with a 100-yard rusher posted a 73-28-2 record for a 718 winning percentage. That rated higher than clubs with a 100-yard receiver that went 105-61, and or a 300-yard passer, which went 68 and 44. So just running a little key there. Matters. Running still matters, even in today's passing game. Major, that one was for you. You can use that stat wherever you want. But till then, till it. next week, you can't use it until next week, okay? Because we're we're closing up the show right now. Head to fantasypoints.com. Enter promo code. 22 Vipers 10 get 10% off that subscription. Hey, just because your drafts ended doesn't mean your fantasy season ends, right? It is day to day manager waivers, starts and sits. We got you covered here on the Vipers Network each and every week. You don't want to miss out. And hey, just drop right now if you want to take a look at the Thursday night preview, the prime time preview, so to speak. I just drop my thoughts on the Rams, on the Bills, and those matchups inside the matchups. You can catch that on the Vipers Network and also drop an article, 2,000 words. Tomorrow, so make sure to check that out. With that all being said, this has been the Dynasty Vipers Vipercast presented by the Fancy Points Media Group, and we will see you all next week. Take care.